Welcome to the Canadian International Auto Show. We're here at the Hyundai booth with a couple super special guests here. We have the RN22E and the N74 Concept from Hyundai. These are part of their Rolling Lab program. Wanna know what Rolling Lab is? Let's check it out. So Till, tell us about the two vehicles that you brought here and what are their purpose? Yeah, the two vehicles, we see the RN22 here. Uh, it's actually one of the rolling labs which is fully battery electric, uh, more than 580 horsepower. And it um, is all wheel drive and can, through torque vectoring, put some power uh, to the front and to the rear. So, and we raced this vehicle uh, this year for the third time in ETCR. So it's going to be um, racetrack capable, of course. This is one of the three end pillars of, um, of our DNA. Racetrack capability, corner rascal, please come around and see the stunning design. It's based on the Ionic 6, uh, has a wider stance, has the end logo in the grill, and has, of course, the lower point of gravity based on the EGMP, our electric global modular platform. And uh, the end brand has its um, philosophy from motorsports over the rolling apps we see here. We presented here today at the Toronto Auto Show, all the way down to the end production models. And whatever technologies we test in motorsports, then are trickling down to the rolling labs, which is the playground of our engineers. And then we find some of that, those technologies in, uh, in our end production models. The RN22E is, would reflect the short-term um, direction of racing. As I said, it's already racing in ETCR, and we believe um, battery electric um, high performance will be part of uh, the short-term future of racing. And we also would like to customers to accept electrified high performance, and we would like to show them what our future end production models, the Ionic 5N, will come in a global worldwide, uh, worldwide launch uh, later this year and then we'll come to the North American market early 2024 and we have to somehow prove that it's actually racetrack capable and follows our end brands DNA. Well we brought you know one of each literally you know one is a uh, battery electric and the other one is a uh, fuel cell electric uh, you know the, the two technologies are kind of competing from each other and trying to make headways uh, rather than betting on one, we are actually kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, giving the opportunity for both technologies to come through. Take these cars as uh, test mules, so we get to test many different, you know, technologies and possibilities. And we all hope that these cars, you know, yield some fruits and eventually become production vehicles of some sort. Now, is, there must be a compromise when you're developing a performance electric vehicle. Um, what, you know, how much aero do you put into it? Because I know you still need downforce and are there any benefits of developing, you know, electric performance vehicles over a gas version? Mm -hmm. You know, when we design, you know, baseline electric vehicles, we try to come up with the best aerodynamic possible. So we are extending the range as much as we can. But when it comes to high performance electric vehicles, Obviously, we got to work, work with the different aerodynamics so that yeah, they do get the, you know, the enough air for cooling and also you know, downforce for you know, handling and you know, precision. Yeah, you know, with naturally aspirated or with the you know, internal combustion engine cars, whenever we do the high performance version, first thing we had to do was uh, just to open up the, you know, the cooling uh, area for the you know, grill. But with electric cars, you know, you don't have to worry about that so much. And also electric motors, they normally have a better torque. So, you know, we can get there pretty quickly without a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, performance enhancements. But at the other hand, we got to make different, uh, you know, excitement. Uh, for instance, electric cars, you don't get the, you know, the rumbling sounds of the engine. So you gotta kind of stimulate the sensory, uh, you know, inputs in different ways. So some would say that this kind of looks like a DeLorean. Is there a reason why? Well, I guess by now it's clear that yeah, there is a kind of a, you know, a lineage 
uh, between the DeLorean and, uh, and the Chilsa, we call it, 74. Because it was created by the same designer, you know, Giorgiaro. Uh, you know, we gave attempt to bring the production version of it uh, for various reasons uh, that kind of folded. And a few years later, DeLorean came through with that design. So there was a chance that this could have been the Back to the Future car. Uh, it could have been, yes. <laughs> well, we have our HMETC, our Hyundai Motor Technology Center, also close to the Nürburgring. And uh, we test all of our cars um, many times at the Nürburgring. As you know, the N stands for Namyang, our R&D center in Korea, and the Nürburgring, the toughest racetrack in the world. Is it a lot more challenging or easier to tune a car for the Nürburgring being electric? Well, we simulate racing at the Nürburgring um, under very tough conditions. And of course, it's uh, all about suspension, the chassis. But this one uh, is done very well by our engineers. And we're just telling them the briefing of what we expect an end car to be able to do. So they're doing everything possible to make it racetrack capable. And the true corner rascal also with a heavier weight of batteries which is the most limiting factor, as you know. But with a special new advanced technologies for torque vectoring and power distribution and then a lot of cooling, uh, we are pretty far. And I think, uh, or I know you will see in the Ionic 5N that it's also able to race on the Nürburgring quite well. You know, when a project like this comes, it, you know, does it really, as a designer, do you really get excited? Yeah, you know, when you work on production vehicles, you know, you're kind of crunching, crunching the number, you're trying to meet all the criteria, and it gets a more of a, uh, you know, just uh, run-of-the-mill work. But once in a while, when you get to work on projects like uh, Envision Chilsa, you know, everybody gets really excited, because uh, now you get to really do something that means something you know, for the company, and it becomes a, a halo effect that kind of sets the course of our company's future. So yeah, it's very exciting. Is it becoming more and more common now? People are getting to know N as the performance division now? We believe so. We, we sell around 30,000 cars um, globally per year. And uh, these rolling labs are definitely doing something for, for its halo effect for the overall Hyundai brand. We have uh, very young customers. We have a strong, loyal uh, customer followership. And uh, the car culture and then high performance culture is uh, quite great in the areas of uh, North America, Europe, also here in Canada, it's, it's quite strong. So we tap into something which builds a community and people are happy that there's a new player out there. Is there a way that we could possibly see this in production one day? Because oh, that's, that's hot. A, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, the feedback since we launched it statically in Busan, Korea last year, and then we went to the Bilsterberg uh, in Germany to actually have some, some selected journalists drive this car on the Bilsterberg, the feedback was overwhelming. So you're right, your question is actually very reasonable. We could see this car in production and we're thinking about it, but to be quite honest, this has to be thought through uh, very thoroughly. But if I had my personal wish, uh, this would come to life.